I'm Jack Stewart, AMP IA, and I teach part time at an AMP school. And uh, I kind of specialize in Franklin engines and stents and airplanes. Uh, I have other videos on uh, YouTube if you want to watch them. Today we're going to talk about spark plugs. Uh, Brett Chellicott showed me one time an array of tools that he uses to get the spark plugs out of his airplane. And I told him, Brett, you don't need all that stuff. And under FAR part 43, removing, cleaning, gapping, putting the spark plugs back in is a legal operation that you as an owner can do to your airplane. So the first thing we're gonna look at is these two wrenches right here. This is to get the leads off the spark plugs. This is one that I cut down years ago and you'll notice that it's quite a bit smaller than what I cut it down from. It's so I can get into tighter places with it. And if you really want to get in a really tight place, not on Stenson's, but some airplanes require something like this, uh, beach bonanzas. So you bring the, in, the airplane in, the first thing you wanna do, it's hot. The rules say that, well, not the rules, but service bulletins say that the engine should be hot to check the compression. You're gonna take all the top spark plugs out to make the engine safe so you can turn the propeller without worrying about it, hitting on one cylinder and tearing your head up. So we go over here to the airplane and because I'm a short guy, I gotta use a step stool and get right up in here. Now, the reason you use two wrenches is one to hold the lead and the other one to loosen the lead. If you don't hold that lead, after a while, you'll turn the lead and it'll fray inside here. And the next thing you know, you're buying a five or $600 set of leads. It should come right off real easy. They should just, everything should be clean and work right. Now, if you don't have a 13, 16 spark plug socket, go buy the shortest one you can find. This one is uh, considerably shorter. than one of the regular spark plug sockets. And the reason you want short is it's not too bad on top, but when you get underneath working on the spark plugs, it's hard to get to. You'll see where the short socket is an advantage. Make sure it goes seats all the way down on the plug and then I usually just take my ratchet and I give it a little pop and that takes it loose. Now remember, Franklin engines use a 14 millimeter spark plug. That means they should only be torqued 18 to 22 foot pounds. Now, one real important thing when you take the spark plug out Make sure you get the gasket with it. If you don't get the gasket, it'll fall down in between the cooling fins and it'll cause a hot spot in your cylinder. Now, I use a spark plug box. These are the top plugs, these are the bottom plugs, and I'll, we'll talk more about that later. So. This one goes in the box in the appropriate spot, and you can see this is a dirty spark plug, and it's kind of wet. I'm gonna lay it aside for right now, because I wanna show you how to get number six plug out. Everybody talks about splitting the nose bowl and doing all kinds of crazy things. You don't need to do any of that. Once the bottom cowling is off, the nose bowl moves pretty freely. I just use a six inch extension on my spark plug socket, stick it right down in there, pop it loose and remove it. It's not hard to get to at all. Here again, be sure you get that gasket and it goes in the appropriate position in my box. That's number six. 
all the bottom plugs will go here, one, two, three, four, five, six, because spark plugs, after they're cleaned and gapped, have to be rotated. Rotated means the bottom plugs go to the top place in the cylinder and the next cylinder in the firing order. So the top plugs go to the bottom, bottom plugs go to the top, the firing order is one, five, one, four, five, two, three, six. So the number one plugs would go to number four cylinder and so on in the firing order. That's important because of the way the magnetos fire. You'll get a little bit more wear out of your spark plugs. Now, speaking of spark plugs, after they're cleaned, let's clean this one right here. See how dirty it's oily? Or maybe some fuel on it. Airplanes have a tendency to run rich on the ground. I use, whoop, here it is. I use brake and parts cleaner first. Just a little bit. Dry it off. One thing about that stuff is it dries almost instantly anyway. But you can see now that it's not oily like it was. But it's still dirty. Now, if your AMP has one of those big, nice $600 spark plug cleaning machines, that's fine. My partner's got one, but I don't use it. I bought this thing 30 years ago, probably. They're still available, aircraft tool supply. Even J.C. Whitney, I think, has them. There's a bag with some grit, and you can refill the grit. Air supply. Put your spark plug in here. Don't need the gasket on it. Put your spark plug in here. Is that in the way? In this hole right here. You don't have to shove it in all the way. And there's a button here on the back. Push down on the button and move your spark plug around. That's all there is to it. It's nice and clean now. Now we can check the gap. But I always make sure that I blow all the grit off of those things. Wipe it off again. We sure don't want any of that grit going in the engine. And now I can check my gap. It's amazing that the torque on these is 18 to 22 foot-pounds, while the gap on the electrode is also 18 to 22. So my philosophy is the 18 should fit, but the 22 shouldn't because that gap's a little wide. What do you do about that? Well, these are automotive style plugs and I use an old automotive style. Just bend it down a little bit, just the slightest little bit and check it again. You may have to do that two or three times. You don't want to overbend it. There we go, the 18 fits. The 22, kinda. So that's good. 18 to 22 thousandths, 18 to 22 foot pounds. Put it back in my box. It's ready to reinstall. Check the rest of them. Now, I've already uh, had these plugs out and cleaned them, and I put the bottom ones back in. This is just a spare plug that I've got. So we're ready to reinstall the plugs. Like I said, number one plug will go to number four cylinder, and top to bottom. Usually I leave them in my tray and put them in the engine, as I've said, rotate them. Some guys like to rotate them 
in the tray. Number four would go to one, four, five, two. Number four would go to bottom five, so on and so forth. Whichever way you want to do it, rotate your plugs. Now, if you get in a situation on the bottom where somebody has tightened up the lead too tight, sometimes when you go to loosen the lead, the whole spark plug turns. The cure for that is one of Jack's homemade wrenches. I can reach up in there and hold that spark plug while I undo the spark plug lead. That's happened to me a few times. It's not fun. Now, uh, Brent was showing all kinds of tools that he uses to get number one and number six out on the bottom. The only thing I use is a real long extension with a wobble joint on it. Here's where that short spark plug socket comes into play. You put your short spark plug socket on there because if you put your long one on there, you're not going to have room to get it up in there. So you got your short one on, you've got the leads off, and you can reach up in there past the uh, exhaust and get on that spark plug and take it out. Same way you can put it back in. Now, you can use a torque wrench on a wobble joint. Don't let anybody kid you. You just don't want to use a torque wrench if it's in this position. Uh, I think the manufacturer says up to 30 degrees or something like that. But anyway, you can use a wobble joint on a torque wrench. You don't have to compensate for anything. Now, if you have trouble getting a spark plug back in, this is a thread chaser. It's 14 millimeter on that end, and it's 18 millimeter, or like Lycoming and Continentals on this end. So you can just screw this down into the hole. I usually put a little uh, anti-seize on here in case it does break anything loose, a carbon deposit or something like that. It'll stick to the anti-seize and when I screw it back out, then I can just wipe it off. That helps the threads. Well, what about the threads on the spark plug? Well, they make a thread chaser for that too. They also make a thread chaser for If I can find one, the spark plug leads. Now these things are just aluminum, and if they get abused a little bit, they don't like to screw back on the plug. Well, here's a thread chaser for a spark plug lead. Now be careful with these things, guys. You don't want to get them on there crooked and mess up your threads. At the same time, Maybe the spark plug needs a little thread service too. So simply screw that on there and clean those threads up that's on the spark plug. Why are we so picky with spark plugs? Well, if you've bought a set of these, these are REJ38s, the number one accepted plug to use in Franklin engines. If you've bought a set of these things, and some of you have gave up to 70 or $80 a piece for them. So treat them very nice, very gentle. Another thing, if you look at that electrode right there, it's war, this ground electrode. See how war it is compared to this one? This one's still pretty flat. This plug here is getting about where it's going to have to be replaced probably in the next 50 to 100 hours, next annual or two annuals from now. Because what you don't want to do is this thing to melt off and fall down into the cylinder and beat things up inside the cylinder. Lots of problems there. Let's see if I covered everything for spark plugs. Screw them back in, use your torque wrench, 18 to 22 foot-pounds. If you torque them over that, like a Lycoming goes to 30 foot-pounds, you'll cause radial cracks around the spark plug hole and it'll cost you a cylinder. 
you'll have to send it somewhere and get it overhauled. So, happy flying, take care of your airplanes, and I'm here to help. Thank you.